Welcome into our Wildcat Weekly. I'm Jake Durant and I'm super excited to be joined by Mike Lozier, the head coach of the NMU women's volleyball team. Mike, thanks for joining us. Glad to be here. So we obviously we're currently in the midst of your season, currently nine and four uh, overall, five and one in the conference on a two match win streak. I know going into the season we had spoken a little bit and you had mentioned that you felt last year's team didn't consistently live up to the standard that has been set there at NMU. Um, do you kind of feel like, at first, I mean, talk about what you meant by that, but then do you feel like this team is kind of reaching that, that bar so far this season? Yeah, last year, um, by any NMU volleyball metric, we just did not you know, get the results that we should or we expect in our program. And this, this program, it is tough to be a part of this. Um, of this volleyball team because we have standards of winning championships, right? You want to come in and you want to win a conference championship, compete to make the NCAA tournament and, and kind of see what happens after that. Um, and last year we just didn't achieve that. And a lot of it started at the beginning, right? You can make excuses for why injuries, whatever, but ultimately we weren't playing to the standard we had set for ourselves. Um, the one thing I do credit that team for is the second half of the season, they really embraced like, hey, let's get better. You know, the seniors were really mentoring the freshmen and helping them come along. And so, you know, when you fast forward to now and how we're playing, we're playing much better. Um, you can't help but look back at that team and say, they helped us get to this point, right? Um, first by, you know, when we struggled, we identified we're struggling in the areas we need to improve. Then we improved upon it at the end of the season. And now this year, we're reaping those benefits at the start of the season because those sophomores who had been trained and mentored by the older athletes are now getting significant playing time, Ali Barlow, Liesl Haugen, um, Helen Byring, like all those athletes um, have put us in this position as sophomores. Um, and, and I do feel like we're competing at a super high level. We have four losses on the year. Um, you know, we lost to number four, Ferris. Um, we lost to Minnesota Duluth, who's a national contender. You know, we lose to Finley at home and, and we play great in that match. Losses to all quality opponents. We're winning matches we should be winning um, and we're getting better every week. So you go 2-0 last week uh, against two programs that are kind of on the rise a little bit, Saginaw Valley State and Lake State. Um, just overall, how, do you, how did you feel your team performed um, in your previous matches, and did anything stick out to you in those matches? Uh, I, I thought we performed well. You know, the biggest uh, issue we're having right now is that second set. Um, the last three matches, our second set has been um, less than stellar. Um, but the thing that I'm proud of with this team is we are rebounding. So that set three has been really quality in all those matches. You know, we lost 29-27 in the third set to Ferris. We beat Saginaw. We beat um, Lake State. And so uh, I'm really happy about, about the results. Winning in this conference is hard. Right, winning at this level is hard. And so anytime you do it, regardless of how it happens, you need to celebrate it, you need to understand you've done something well. Um, but it doesn't mean you don't learn from it. And the thing that I'm really proud of this team for is it feels like when we, whether we win or we lose, we do film on Monday, everyone is focused on how can we get better for the next one. And so you're seeing those results where I think back to matches um, that we had lost previously and think, man, if we were playing then how we're playing now, we would have won those matches. And so that's what you want. That's the quality you want your team, just consistent improvement every day. On Saturday, that match was highlighted by Jacqueline Smith, who became the all-time kills leader. It was a record that was around for, I think, about 30 years. It was yeah. previously, previously set back in 1993, so a huge accomplishment for her. Um, just talk about her as a player, what makes her special, and when she uh, broke that record, how are you feeling? Yeah, yeah. Jackie has been a special talent her entire career, right? You don't break a record like this without doing that. Um, and when she came in her freshman year, we knew she was going to be good. We didn't know how good. Uh, and so I think like a week or two into practice, I said to my assistant at the time, I said, I think she's going to be one of the best players we've ever had. Like just, she's just such an athlete, right? And so um, I sat her down uh, after her freshman year and said, you know, what do you want to accomplish? Like, what are your goals? You know, and, and of course you want to win national championships. Let's, like I said that aside, of course you do. Personally, what do you want to achieve? And one of the things is she wanted to be an All-American, which she's achieved in 2022. And she wants to be one of the best players that ever came through this program. And she accomplished both of those things. And um, I was really proud of her. And I think the hardest part was leading up to this. I'm not a big stats guy. Like, I don't track what people are doing. I leave that up to our sports info department. Um, but I was aware of this particular one. And so I reached out to her mom and said, hey, Jacqueline's, I think, I think at the time she was 24 kills away maybe. I said, should I tell her? Because I don't even know if she's aware. Um, and her mom was like, she doesn't like surprises. Like, so she doesn't want you to like surprise her to announce she broke the record. So we sat her down and told her, like, hey, you're at this point. And this tells you everything you know about Jackie, right? So she goes into that, that weekend knowing what she needed to do. 
I think she had 17 kills the first match, and then she had, what, 22 kills in the second match. And you're just like, this kid rises to the occasion. And that's what makes her special. That's what makes her great. Um, we are working really hard to mix up our offense between Helen and the right side and Megan in the middle and Kenzie in the middle, but ultimately Jackie's kind of our go-to player. And so we're happy to be having the success we're having as a team. Um, and a big part of it is Jackie, but it's fun to have her achieve those individual milestones as well. So you're going to be looking for your third straight uh, win this Thursday when you host Michigan Tech. Obviously, they're a rival. Anytime you face a rival, records go out the window. Um, you're welcoming, welcoming them to Vandermint Arena, which has kind of turned into a nice little home court advantage for you guys. Um, let's talk about what you're expecting out of that match and um, you know, going up against a really solid Huskies team. Well, you know, I mentioned this in my press conference yesterday, but... Um, I really tried to keep Michigan Tech out of our gym until tomorrow. Um, and that was by design because, <laughs> maybe I'm, I'm really generalizing here, so I'm sorry Michigan Tech people. Um, but I, I, I do know that they like to know what they're getting themselves into. They like structure, they like to know, you know certain things. So when you throw a curveball at them, um, like entering a venue they're not familiar with, I think that does give you a slight advantage. Um, and so by keeping them out of the gym, the hope is that when they come in tomorrow, not only they come into a new space that they've never been to, including their coach, right? And I've spoken openly to them about this. Um, and then now you talk about, okay, now can we get that home court advantage with the crowd? Can we get people showing up? Can we get those stands full so that when we're doing really good things, the entire gym is shaking? The other team is very aware of that energy that we're providing, and it's, it's just not positive energy for them. It's positive energy for us. So I'm hoping for a really good crowd, um, and, and ultimately, you know, getting that win is really important. This rivalry is important to everybody. I'm very aware of that. I'm aware of what it means to not only the department, it means the university, to the community. Everyone wants to be tech, and I get that, right? And so we're going to do our best to be prepared for that. They are a very quality team. They've got some really good wins on the season. And so I expect it to be a really great matchup that people are going to enjoy to watch. And you're asking people who are coming to the match to wear green. You want it to be a green out for mental health awareness. Yeah. Um, talk about that and why that's important to you and your program. Yeah, yeah. Northern Michigan is, is highlighting this week in particular for mental health awareness. And it's just something that just continues to um, become bigger in the spotlight, right? Like prioritizing the, the athlete's mental health, not just their physical health. Um, and I'm really, I'm, I'm really happy that Northern Michigan is doing that. You know, having events every single day. We've partnered with a group called Holinsky's Hope. Um, a lot of universities across the country have, have partnered with this group. Um, and it's really um, based off of a Washington State football player who committed suicide, unfortunately. And they're just doing their best to, you know, get the word out about mental health and how, and, you know, resources people can have. And, and Northern Michigan, again, I, I, wanna, I wanna give a lot of credit to, has a lot of resources on campus. Um, we just had a meeting yesterday with all the head coaches and they brought somebody in who runs um, the care department at Northern and, and really helped us understand what they do, what services they can provide for the athletes. And um, we, we make a really strong push in volleyball to make sure that the athletes understand that we are prioritizing their mental health first, right? We give them breaks during the week um, or maybe we don't practice quite as long because I do know the toll it can take on an athlete because of the stresses in their life, right? They do have school full time and they're an athlete full time and they want to have some semblance of a social life. And, you, you try to manage all those things and it just can become a debilitating thing that overwhelms people and can cause anxiety. And so we do our best to try to help them understand that it's okay to not be okay. Um, as long as they're open with us, we can get them the help they need and then you know, hopefully get them better and on the right track. All right, well, thank you, Mike, so much for being here and spending some time with us. Good luck on Thursday against Michigan Tech and then Roosevelt on Friday. Yep, yep. Thank you, Jake. All right. We'll have more MyUP news coming up in just a few minutes.